Welcome back and it's time for our first hot topic. Mining used to be a big deal in Nigeria before we discovered oil, the black gold, in 1956. Well, upon the discovery of oil, Nigeria abandoned not just mining, but also agriculture. And now about 90% of our foreign exchange revenue comes from oil, the black gold. An ugly trend that the new Minister of Solid Minerals Development, uh, Dr. Delia Lake, clearly wants to reverse by targeting 50% GDP contribution from the extractive industry and giving ultimatum to illegal miners. Well, Mr. Bolahon Lodjade, public policy analyst, Lagos State, is my guest as we take a look at this this morning. Good morning, Mr. Lodjade. Good morning to yeah, you. Good morning. Nice to be on the program. Great to have you join us again. Good morning. Okay, so Mr. Yeah, nice to be here. Great to have you. So Mr. Dylan Leke revealed his seven point agenda a um, few days ago, and it includes comprehensive um, review of all mining licenses. Surveillance task force and mines, please, among others. Um, you, you listen to him as you address the press. Um, a right in the step direction, would you say? Very much so. Um, I guess we're waking up gradually to uh, some of this issue. We have been too much focused on oil, oil and gas for a long time. In fact, not much of gas, uh, but predominantly uh, the crude oil. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, all these other, uh, uh, the solid minerals are there, but they don't receive the right level of attention. Mm -hmm. So because we have not focused attention on, on it, a lot of people have abused that space. Foreigners have come in and plundered. You know, they've come in and they've plundered solid minerals and they've thrown us into environmental disasters across the length and breadth of this country. All sort of risks we have been exposed to without making money. Most of the money were going into private pockets. Well, he's got his work cut out for him, considering the collaboration between politically connected Nigerians and these foreigners. You've talked about 17 Chinese men were arrested in Ocean State in May of 2020 for illegal mining. Some states in Nigeria, the newly sworn, uh, some of the newly sworn in governors have also banned mining activities in states like Ebonyi, Oshun, Enugu, Cross River, Taraba, etc. Uh, you know, well, the Miners Association of Nigeria are kicking against the ban uh, on, on mining activities by some of these states, claiming it's illegal for them to do that. So Daniel Aleka has got his work cut out for him. Um, Talk us through what you think he may have to do um, to be able to muzzle through and give us what we need from that ministry. Hello, Mr. Lodgede. Okay. Um, the right response is actually not to ban mining. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, please. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, the, right, the right response is actually not to ban mining. Uh, but if we do, uh, like some states are doing, uh, it should just be a temporary measure while we articulate how exactly we intend to approach the issues of mining. It has been a largely unstructured space. Foreigners will come, they partner with a few high, high and mighty in the society, including some of our political leaders, and then they take all these gemstones and share the profit with nothing to the people. So one of the things that need to happen is that we need to, number one, harmonize the policies at the state level with the federal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the, the laws are clear. Where, what is the role of the federal government and what is the role of, uh, of, of the state, as well as the communities where some of these gemstones are. So we need to be able to articulate the policy so that we are speaking with one voice and we are not confusing the mining market about the opportunities that exist. Then once we have articulated our policies properly, then we can structure that space and ensure that the concessions 
follow the law. If there are no, if the laws around the concession of mining is not robust enough, we need to step into that space and make it more robust and implement those policies and laws as stated, so that the resources that belongs to Nigeria will be to the benefit of Nigeria. And while we mine these resources, we will also articulate the environmental issues. It is not enough to just want to take from the environment. We must preserve and protect the environment as well as you know, deal with security issues that have been associated with a lot of mining uh, uh, sites uh, in Nigeria. Okay, well, this has also thrown, brought to the fore the issues of Land Use Act. Do you find that in the South, the oil belongs to the federal government? I mean, individuals who mine, um, who have refineries, are treated in the way that... You, we, you've seen that all, all that's been playing out, which has led to people from the South South saying there is such imbalance, you know, if in the North... The, 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 the resources there are left for individuals, as it were, as we've seen, which has given birth to a lot of illegal mining. Um, why is it that in the South people are easily clamped down? I don't, I don't think that um, the laws are discriminatory, uh, South versus North, uh, because mining is also taking place in the South. Well, and, and don't forget, we have South, the federal yeah. ministry dedicated to mines. Uh, it's, 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 it's at the federal level. So that is to show that the federal government still has a control over mining activities with a handshake with the state and the communities where these uh, 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 resources exist. So what we have not done, in my opinion, is that we have not put a focus on it, unlike the oil and gas space, where all our emphasis has been for decades. When we exited all those tin, tin uh, 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 oil mines and the coal mines uh, some 50 years ago, and we have discovered oil, we just left all those mining affairs and focused on oil. Oil was good. We were able to make a lot of money from oil, and nobody cared about mining. It is now that oil is becoming a challenge. Oil being about 90% of our foreign exchange earnings, oil being dependent on so many factors, it is now that we are beginning to wake up, to pay attention to mining. So I don't think it's an issue of discrimination. I think it's more of an issue of we've been used to oil for 50 years. Now, because oil is absolutely no longer enough. And it is also a dying resource. We are beginning to now pay attention to solid minerals. So we should focus on it and make it work for us, just like we have focused on oil for so long and made oil to work for us. Well, you know, for a very long time, Nigerians have uh, cried um, about the illegal mining activities in some of the states and wondered why um, some states governors appear to have turned the other side, you know, looked the other way while these illegal miners went on and had a field day. Uh, and also looking at the cheap labor, the cheap labor that these illegal miners um, were able to have in those states. What, what do you think that the NLC, because I think we should bring in NLC here, should be doing with regards to the people that are used or have been used in these sites, these illegal sites across the state who are being uh, unjustly used, if I could put it that way? I, I, I'm not so sure uh, that NLC um, has deliver in court. I don't think they are able to um, deal with this matter. The way things happen in those mining areas, a lot of insecurity issues are involved. They are not places that you just jump into because you said you are liberal. Are you, are you joking with your life or something? These are people who come to mining sites with military and police and security present, private security and public security into those particular states. And they have a concession, and the concession is from the government. So. Uh, 
it goes way beyond what labor can handle for now. Of course, uh, because labor is involved, uh, workers are involved, I believe, well, labor by the side needs to also start to agitate. But the nature of those mining sites as it were today does not exactly lend itself to what labor can readily intervene in. Number one, the communities themselves are involved. The communities where those resources are are involved at the level of the of the of the of the tiny amount, what I call peanuts, that are handed over to this community. Mm -hmm. We are talking of poverty. People who have never owned hundred thousand naira of their own at a time, having a million drop on their laps, they take the one million and then they collaborate or they more or less um, support what is going on. I've seen instances in which miners come to a village and offer the village head a new palace that, look, we'll build you a befitting palace. This one you are living in, it's not good for you. And they did. That kind of, 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 a, of a traditional ruler does not understand what he is giving away for, 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 for picking us. So the community are involved on one side. Political leadership is involved. We have spoken about certain uh, states where it seems as if the governor looked the other way. Why do you think the governor in those states are looking the other way? It is because these are also the elites or members of the elite that are involved in these illegal activities. So the man is not going to pay attention because he himself is involved. That is why the current uh, uh, direction is so much welcome. Um, it doesn't have to be attacking in nature. We can call in all the stakeholders, have the right level of discussions, and articulate the policies to make these resources beneficial to the, to the Nigerian people. Well, the Miners Association of Nigeria, um, what, what do you think should be done about their cry, their outcry against the banning of these some of the sites across some of the states where legal mining has been taking place? They have quoted some laws, some aspects of the law um, as they kick against it. They are a critical stakeholder. So when I speak about engagement, um, they also have to be in the mix of all those engagements. Uh, most of the mining activities that are going on in the country are largely unstructured. People are privileged, so they've gotten some concession. They go into communities and plunder the community, giving people peanuts. They don't care about the environmental issues. That cannot continue. And the Miners Association within itself will also begin some sort of self-regulation. Mm -hmm. You know, before or, or as part of the entire gamut of reinventing that particular space. There must be a regulator. Monitoring is critical. What are these miners doing in the mining site? How are they treating the environment? How are they treating... And while the direction from the government is critical... The issue of self-regulation from the miners themselves or the miners' association is also very important. So that the miners' association on one side are self-regulated and then there is regulation from the government so that we can have a sane element. The miners must consider some element of self-regulation. Yeah. What we have right now in the mining side will embarrass anybody who, 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 who loves the environment. It is horrible. So some element of self-regulation, but self-regulation would not be enough. Government has to make sure that the regulatory environment must be stronger. It is part of this policy articulation that is devastated. When you take from the environment, you must also be ready to give back to the environment, protect that environment, ensure that it is not just you taking, you're also giving back. The way the workers have been treated is horrible. Mm -hmm. So government also has a role in that as well as the miners association. So when we talk about engagement that needs to happen, those engagement must also involve the miners. If they are a critical stakeholders, uh, stakeholder that must reform their way.
in how they approach this resource mining as well as how they treat the environment and the people. Yeah, you know, the way the, mine, the, the workers are being treated, as you have just rightly alluded to, is horrible, which was why I had mentioned earlier the need to have the NLC look into this, because not just these miners, these workers who are working for these illegal miners and even the legal miners uh, being treated shabbily, you find that oftentimes when these labor, some Lebanese and, and Chinese corporations come into this country and treat their Nigerian workers shabbily in the most dehumanizing way possible, and they keep getting away with it. And I wonder, what is labor doing? Right from my days as a youth copper import hacker, I've heard such stories, and it's continuing all to today. Yeah, um, like, like I said, labor must play its part. But I also understand, for example, will NLC walk into the gold mines of Zampara to go and carry out, say, uh, a picket where there are bandits left and right, where there are guns blaring and aircraft all over the whole place? Um, it, is, it is most um, unlikely that that would happen. But they could go with so the police, there are, there the, the are monitoring police. police, they could go with the monitoring police, the surveillance task force, and the mines police, which have been set up. I understand that we already had them before, so perhaps this is a kind of reinforcement that the new minister is talking about. So if Labour was interested in doing anything about it, they could go with that monitoring task force and the mines police force. You see, I, I, I still prefer um, that the strengthening comes from the government that has the power over security. The mining side themselves are heavily policed, sometimes with military people and private security operatives that the miners themselves have hired to come into that space. So the, the, the true way that can be effective, in my opinion, uh, is that the government in its might which is what I think the current uh, minister in charge is trying to drive. Because all these things that you were talking about have been there. So the question is, why has it not worked? Mm -hmm. But if government at the center has decided to put a renewed focus on it, and the minister is serious about implementing the, what he has said, the way he has said it, um, things will begin to change. Things will begin to change. Everybody will know that there is a new sheriff in town and that all the nonsense and shenanigans of the past will not be allowed. It is on the wing of such situation that you can see the NLC become effective and rise up to their own uh, uh, responsibility and, and the expectation that we have of them. Issues of safety at the mine, for example, mm -hmm. is a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. People are dying in the mines. Yeah, they do collapse and kill people. Both in the course of operations and even in the abandoned mines. Who is paying attention to that? Mm -hmm. Labor must do its part. But if labor is going to be effective, government, like the current minister is trying to do, we need to step in right there powerfully mm -hmm. and possibly come there while wielding a stick and make sure that the laws are obeyed, anybody who disobey is punished accordingly. Very important that we do that. And, and that creates the right environment for even NLC to begin to step uh, into the position. You know, as we talk about this, I'm reminded of the blood diamond. And if we're going to move forward, uh, would you suggest that some who have, if not all, who have um, enjoyed this, the wealth of this illegal mining, who have made billions of dollars from this illegal mining, would you suggest that this new minister goes after them to get them to account? And also for the damage that they cost to the environment, the illegal mining, and the injustice meted out to the Nigerians working for them? Uh, it, it would have been nice, uh, but I'm not so confident that something like that will happen. Uh, and the reason is that the issue around uh, the environmental issues surrounding mining activities is not peculiar to mining, uh, to uh, solid mineral. We have seen it in the oil and gas space for decades. And the question I ask 
is how have we been able to deal to deal with environmental issues in the creek in, in the creeks of Nigeria in the Niger Delta? How have we been able to hold people to account, including multinationals who have plundered those environments and left them in disastrous situations? Um, there are local companies too who have done the same thing in that same Niger Delta. How many of them have, been, have we been able to hold to account? I remember vividly what Obama did with the, with the uh, massive spillage at, by, by Mobile during his tenure as, as president. Um, Mobile almost left, 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 left that uh, environment by virtue of the kind of punishment, you know, that was meted out to them. In Nigeria, we are yet to see that. We are yet to see that. So will it now happen in the case of solid minerals? Fingers crossed. I am not particularly hopeful that it will happen. But if it happens, I, I, I mean, I actually look forward to being disappointed when it starts to happen in solid minerals. <laughs> well, there are those who say that the 30-day ultimatum given by uh, the minister to the illegal miners is way too lenient. Do you share that opinion? I didn't hear that, sorry. I said there is a school of thought that 30 days given to illegal miners, you know, by the new minister uh, is way too lenient, that he should have just gone right in immediately. Uh, Im Im immediately may also not work out. Uh, there are equipments all over the place. Uh, the, the mining equipment are there. Uh, there will also be certain discussions that need to happen. Um, so I, I think 30 days... Is okay, um, you know, uh, but then 30 days also allows the government to prepare its own rollout. Uh, the, the monitoring team that will go out and enforce uh, the illegal, uh, 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 you know, the, the law against the illegal activities. Uh, they have, you have to prep, um, I mean, you know, do that, that, that kind of uh, a task force. Um, you have to prepare the resources for them to be able to do what they need to do. You have to work with the security agencies to be able to enforce. So it, it, it's not actually something that you can jump into and make happen uh, in, in, two, in, two, in one week or, or two days, no. Um, 30 days is a very good notice. Get out of there if you are illegal. And if you're still there after 30 days, then whatever you find, you, you take it. Well, thank you, Mr. Bolaho Olojode, uh, for your time on this very critical issue that we're taking a look at this morning. Thank you for having me. Mr. Bolaho Olojode, public policy analyst, has joined us in Lagos to take a look at our first hot topic. Do stay with us. We'll be right back.